right at this very moment, I'm about six weeks away from launching the Sydney Science Fiction Film Festival, um, which is a, a very exciting undertaking. I've, I've uh, programmed a um, very sort of international slate of films and um, with a, a large number of women directors, and it's a real sort of determination of, on my part to, to uh, bring a global sort of perspective to science fiction uh, and speculative storytelling uh, through cinema. G'day people, here we are. So filmmakers, and um, I'm excited today because we're going to be chatting with Simon Foster, who is uh, a career film man. He's worked behind the scenes. Uh, he's directed, produced, and um, in more recent times, he's been working as a film critic, and you would probably recognise his voice from numerous shows across the airwaves here in Australia. He also... Uh, is the director of the Sydney Science Fiction Film Festival, <laughs> the SSFFF, and Monster Fest. So, um, and uh, as I put in the title there, I just thought it was kind of fun, and it is a true thing. Um, someone who appreciates um, what it was like to watch old movies, double features in questionable venues, uh in the art house movie era um and i believe he's trying to kind of keep that alive in his um publication as well so let let's see he's got <laughs> i thought i was a busy guy but he has got a thousand things going on so rather than me try and go through them all we'll get him in here in a um in just uh just a moment g'day mate how are you going g'day brad lovely to talk to you how are you <laughs> Good. How did I go with that uh, that overview? Did I <laughs> did I get that right? You you're doing so many things. <laughs> I'm impressed by myself all of a sudden. I didn't realize I'd done, didn't realize I'd done so many things. Yeah. So it's uh you can tell by the grey in the beard that I've been in the business quite some time and uh, loved every minute of it. Yeah. So good. Um, yeah. What is it about beards and grey? I've got quite a, a, not not as much as you. You're beating me there. I'll yeah. Say. Um, yeah. We're being a being a um, a festival director in in 2020. This is a lot greyer than it was in April or March. That's for sure. This is a, a an old man's COVID beard, I think. So COVID beard. Yeah, I'm sure there was probably a few more greys due to due to COVID. So, mate, hey, I would love it if you could start out by. I guess giving everyone a, a, an intro. I always like to hear things in people's own words, and sure. just, I suppose tell us, you know, who you are and what you're doing at the moment, and then we'll kind of probably wind the clock back and go through the full story, and um, and we'll just take it from there. Happy to, yes, mate. Um, I'm, I'm right at this very moment. I'm about six weeks away from launching the Sydney Science Fiction Film Festival. Um, which is a, a very exciting undertaking. I've, I've uh, programmed a um, very sort of international slate of films and um, with a, a large number of women directors and it's a real sort of determination of, on my part to, to uh, bring a global sort of perspective to science fiction uh, and speculative storytelling uh, through cinema. So. Um, we're gearing up for that. Uh, just a couple of weeks prior to that, we have Monster Fest kicking off all around Australia. I'm the festival director of the Sydney leg of that, and I've been weighing in on the, the programming decisions over the last six months um, with Grant and Kim and Jared and the team there at, at Monster Fest. So that's a very exciting undertaking as well. Um, still got plenty of review work going on. I review across ABC FM. Uh, here in here in New South Wales, uh, some of the nine media channels as well, um, and always trying to to find content and find time to write for my own site, Screen Space. So that's mm. that's exactly where I I am at the moment, um, as well as being a, a dad and husband, I'm loving every minute of that too. Yeah, yeah, you got a couple of kids. Yes, two daughters, one who's twenty, and uh, um the phase where she thinks her dad is cool that's long since passed and i've got <laughs> i've got a a 14 year old so uh two daughters so yeah they're uh, they're wonderful yeah yeah oh uh, i've got to say yeah my daughter's nine and um 
fortunately, I think I was still mostly in that that era. And my <laughs> son, he's he's the really the booster to 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 my ego because. Um, although he has died off a little bit, I might have to have a stern word to him over the weekend, but he would normally be like, you know, whenever I would come upstairs, I worked in this office downstairs and, um, whenever I would come in, he's four, he'd be like, ah, oh, dad's here. Like he's like announcing my arrival. I was yeah, like, they're yes, good years. They're good <laughs> that's years. My, that's my guy. But yeah, I do fear for the day and I know that it's going to come that my daughter's probably just going to not want to have anything to do with me. So anyway, we'll see how that all plays out. Yeah. Uh, if, you know, and on the topic of that, um, the other show that I've kept on, because I had five running, which was just madness, um, and so I've, I've, I've pretty much killed three of those. Maybe I'll keep one of, the, one of them going. But the other main one that I'm running at the moment is called Changemakers, which is about people who uh, have started social enterprises or not-for-profit or, uh, um, yeah, they're even just doing something great from a grassroots perspective. Mm-hmm. And I spoke to some girls yesterday who have a really successful um, startup called The Big Sister Experience. And what they do is go into schools and talk with teens, preteen girls, and basically provide a safe space to kind of go through all sorts of issues. And they also, I think, work with parents and you know, try to give them some guidance around it. That sounds like an amazing undertaking. Um, and to spin it back towards what I do just briefly, mm-hmm. yeah. one of the reasons I love being a festival director and getting a chance to see films from all around the world is to put forward um, the different types of narratives that focus on something more than just the, you know, the white male stereotypical hero's journey. And and a lot of the features I've programmed this year um, have, have female protagonists, have female leads, uh, females in very, women in very sort of strong roles. And with 23%, I think I mentioned of our films featuring um, directed by women. Um, that wasn't a conscious decision when I un- was sort of when I undertook the festival. I was really just looking at the narratives and the films themselves, and certainly with the science fiction genre, you look at the, the visuals. Um, but as it played out, there's just a lot of really interesting, exciting filmmakers and talent in front of and behind the cameras that are women that are making these films. And as a dad, and the point I was trying to make with that was, as a dad, um, you're always looking to to encourage the talent and the and, and foster some sort of community of, of um, filmmakers that respect females and what, the, what women do um, in the industry. Yeah, hundred percent. No, um, I yeah I agree. It is a blessing, I believe, to have uh, a daughter or daughters because it does give you that extra sort of um, drive because you think about hey, what's been the state of play? What's the current state of play? And what's it going to look like when these guys come through. So let's talk about the festival. Um, So this is the third one of these you've run, is that right? Yeah, for the last two years, I've done the Sci-Fi Film Festival on which I was the program director. So a a great friend of mine, Tom Pappas, he he is the festival director. Um, Unfortunately, we had to cancel this year's event just because of COVID. But um, uh, yeah, so I was doing just the programming of those of, of the sci-fi film festival and with this one i've gone out and launched my own one um undertaken the the, the sort of greater festival directorial role and um that's been a, that's been a learning curve all of a sudden i fully appreciate what um what tom had to go through in putting everything together but uh um and i've got um, we're running it at the actors center australia at that leichhardt here in sydney which is one of the inner west suburbs and they've got this beautiful sort of state-of-the-art 300 seat screening room um i don't think we'll be able to use all the seats given the covid complications but yeah. we are certainly um you know looking to to bring a, a new kind of film festival to sydney and to and to that part of sydney um but yeah as as someone who's program directed uh the two sci-fi film festivals up to now i've also been on a lot of festival juries i worked with the night of horror um, often in the genre space. Um, I was head of the jury at this year's relaunch Night of Horror Film Festival. Um, I've worked with Sydney Underground Film Festival. So um, these are all guys that I came into contact with uh, when I left the business side of the film industry back in 2000 and sort of went fully into the journalistic and became a film reviewer and, and film journalist full time. So, um, yeah. so yeah, so the, the festival space is a really exciting one to be in if you're, if you're a lover of movies, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So talk to me a little bit more, and it's interesting. Leichhardt, I lived uh, uh, lived with my parents at Abbotsford for a little while. Oh yeah, um, just down the road. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We grew up in the country, but Dad, by the time I was in high school, the tail end of it, he'd moved into a, a role as director of technology for the Department of Education, which was took him down to Sydney. Sure. And uh, so they had just a little apartment in some kind of pleasant bull type. <laughs> you know, like one of those kind of like complexes where you, you felt like you, yeah, if you swim in the, the pool, you feel like you've gone to cocoon or something. And uh, it's probably about the age bracket of most of the other people there. But um, then there, there was me <laughs> who I'd been out of home and I'd lived in Cronulla for a while and then I just retreated back to home for a little while. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I was down the road, but it's a beautiful area. Yeah, really, really nice. It really is. Um, and it's gone through a certain degree of gentrification over the last few years. The, the tough streets of Newtown and Marrickville and, and to a certain extent Leichhardt have, have changed quite a bit. There's a, a, a more artistic community there. Uh, um, but we're hoping to tap into some of the more fringe elements and the way I program the festival is to sort of bring people from outside the area seeking sort of more adventurous, more exciting kind of films that aren't seen in cinemas very much. Um, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's exciting. So what will the, uh, like, I did um, glance at briefly, but um, for everybody else who hasn't yet been to the, um, the site, or on the topic of that, what's the, what's the website if people do want to go and have a look there? We're using our Film Freeway portal at the moment as our website. Okay. So just go to the filmfreeway.com slash Sydney Science Fiction Film Festival and you can get all your tickets and all the information about the film there. Plus, I'm, I'm Facebook and Twitter crazy, so um, you can find anything on at Sydney Science Film science fiction film festival on yeah. on facebook and sydney sid sci-fi fest on twitter so you can see all sorts of details there yeah great okay and so how many different movies are you screening and over how many days what kind of times a day what's that look like we run uh, November 19 to 21, kick off on Thursday evening at 6.30 with the world premiere of the Australian action sci-fi film Monsters of Man, directed by a Queensland guy called Mark Toa. Um, two films on that Thursday night, the opening night film and then a, an Italian film called Darkness. On the Friday night, we screen... Um, uh, Fish Love, which is a French film about uh, a world... Uh, where all the sea life has been extinct and um, an ichthyologist discovers a small creature, which we all know to be an axolotl, but which they've got no idea what it is. They've never seen it. And it becomes the centre of this very lovely sort of uh, science fiction-based love story. Then we get into some heavy stuff uh, late on Friday night with this our uh, uh, dark horror futuristic visions, um, which is a... Uh, a f we've got three shorts and a 60-minute feature called Anonymous Animals, it, which is sort of uh, switches the tables. H uh, animals are being mistreated. Uh, sorry, humans are being mistreated by uh, a race of, of um, animal uh, population. So it's a, it's a dark one. Overlords. Animal yeah, overlords, I exactly. I saw the poster for that. Uh, it like a, a, looks like a, a human body with a deer head holding a with shotgun or something. And yeah, I, I it's a like very that. dark... <laughs> That, that does, does actually sound quite disturbing. <laughs> Very nasty piece of work. It's a French film, and uh, anyone who knows some of the the hardcore French extreme horror films, they know what they're in for with that one. So, and then all day sat, and then all day Saturday from ten thirty, where um, we start off with uh, the uh, Australian short film showcase, which is selling like hotcakes. Um, there's a real groundswell of support out there for Australian short filmmakers in, in the genre events. I know the guys who ran A Night of Horror, their top selling section, their top selling session was the, um, the, the, the shorts. So, uh, and then into a Queensland showcase, the world premiere of a film called Strangeville on the Saturday afternoon at one. Um, then we go into the evening sessions at 6.30, we're screening two films from... Uh, a part of the world you don't often see science fiction films from. It's a, it's a Middle Eastern showcase. We've got a 30-minute film from uh, two brothers out of Iran. And then at uh, then after that, we have a, an extraordinary film called Scales, which I've been trying to bring to Australia all year and so glad to have the chance to. It's a, 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 a United Arab Emirates film, woman director, um, about a village that sacrifices their youngest daughters to the, the creatures of the sea, the mermaids, uh, but one 
young girl decides to fight back against the the, the um, madness of it. So it is a fantastic film, an extraordinary piece of filmmaking. So that's on the right. Saturday night um, from six thirty. It's called Scales. Scales. Mm, yeah. Interesting. Wonderful, wonderful film. Yes.